Now let's talk about the ideal gas law, and we'll actually save Dalton's law of partial pressures for a future lecture. Uh, the ideal gas law, we talk a lot about ideal gases, and in the last portion of the lecture we talked about what makes an ideal gas truly ideal. Um, so what uh, those were the fact that the ideal gas particles had zero volume, and that each particle had zero attraction to other things, particles or the wall. Uh, what I would like to say right now is that uh, in this class, all gases act ideally unless we tell you otherwise. And so the assumption, or let's assume, and it's a good assumption, assume all gases act ideally at room temperature and pressure. All gases act ideally at room temperature and pressure, or very close to this anyway. And that means that all gases follow the ideal gas law. Now let me give it to you. It is PV equals NRT, where P is pressure, V is volume, T is temperature, lowercase n is the number of moles of gas, and R is called the gas constant. It's also called the ideal gas constant, and it is also called the universal gas constant, but it's, it's a gas constant, and it's the only gas constant we deal with in this class. And it has the number 0 0.08206 when pressure is in atmospheres and volume is in liters. So all pressures when you use this equation will be in atmospheres, and all volumes will be in liters. Uh, let's see, so what we wanna go ahead and do is start using this. For example, how many moles of gas are in a basketball with total pressure 24.3 PSI, pounds per square inch, volume of 3.24 liters, and temperature of 25 degrees Celsius? Uh, so this is a great question for the ideal gas law. We're asked for moles, we have a temperature, we have a volume, and we have a pressure, and we do have a little bit of unit conversion work to do, but otherwise we can totally do this. Now, uh, my preferred way for solving these problems is to plug all of the numbers in in their proper set of units and then do the math with actual numbers. Some people like to rearrange the ideal gas law to solve for the thing that they're looking for and then plug all the numbers in here. Either way works. Um, just make sure you get the right answer. Now let's see, my pressure, uh, I'm gonna save some space here. So 24.3 PSI. I know that there's 14.7 PSI per one atmosphere. And that comes from our conversion and equation sheet. Or one atmosphere equals 14.7 PSI. One point six five. I'm going to leave some space here. I get one point six five atmospheres. I have three point two four liters that is in the proper set of units. I don't know my N from the previous slide. My R is 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. And my temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. And you should remember for gases in particular, all temperatures are in Kelvin. makes me think of temperature in Kelvin, and it also makes me think of Tinkerbell. So uh, Tink, uh, take your degrees Celsius, add 273, you get 298 Kelvin. And now I have all my numbers, and the only thing I have to do is solve for N. 
multiply the left hand side, take the two numbers, divide by the right hand side, 1.65 times 3.24 divided by 08206 divided by 298. And I get 0.219 moles of gas. And a couple things I'll point out at this point. So first off, we're talking about a basketball and the gas in there is usually air. And air is a mixture of gases. So uh, inside this basketball, whatever gases are in air, the volume in this, under these conditions, all of those gases will add up to 0 0.219 moles of gas. So uh, A, or I guess this would be note one. Note one, the ideal gas law works for all gases, Uh, works for all gases, uh, works for um, mixtures of gases, and pure gases. Uh, and in fact, if we wanted to think about one gas in particular, uh, and we'll talk more about this, and let's say that gas was oxygen, that gas would, uh, that oxygen would have a pressure uh, however inside let's say this basketball the volume of the basketball will be the same and the temperature of the basketball will be the same but you can think of the moles of gas of any one pure gas inside a mixture as uh, having a pressure itself so Anyway, we'll see this coming up. We'll see with, without subscripts. And uh, in any case, just think of this works, whether we know the gas or not, um, works for all gases, works for mixture of gases. It's our gas law. It's my favorite one. Now, a uh, uh, couple words here. So standard conditions. Because the volume of gas varies with pressure and temperature, chemists have agreed on a set of conditions to report uh, our measurements so the comparison is easy. We call these standard conditions. So STP is standard temperature and pressure. Those are one bar and zero degrees Celsius. So that's my standard uh, pressure and my standard temperature. So if you see a problem, so uh, and I'll put these in parentheses. And parentheses mean that uh, I will not ask you to memorize this for the exam and for any quizzes, but it is useful because you will see it on the homework where it just says, what is the uh, pressure of this gas at STP? And you can come look at your notes or you can Google it. STP is one bar, zero degrees Celsius. Now, um, here's another problem. And I want to be uh, clear about when to use the ideal gas law. The ideal gas law, it's asking for volume this time. Let's write out the ideal gas law. And uh, we won't solve this, but we'll at least think about it for a minute. So we have a pressure. Good. We are asked for the volume, so that's our question mark. We have a temperature, uh, good. We have the ideal gas constant. Uh, so the ideal gas constant is also on your conversion equation sheet too, by the way. Uh, now N, uh, in order to solve this, we need N. We only have grams, but we can convert grams into moles. And then continue to solve this problem. So the rest of this will be a companion problem because um, I'm fairly straightforward that you can handle it.